welcome back. I wanted to do a video, or if you're new, welcome. I want to do a video on math manipulatives and which ones I think are a huge waste. Okay, <laughs> let me get right to it. This is a winner as far as I'm concerned. We use it um, with Math Mammoth. Now I have two different curriculums. I have Spiral Math and I have, what's the other one? Mastery Math. Um, so I'm going to do a video reviewing those two types as well. Now for the, the Mastery Math, we use this. And I think it's, you know, it was like 10 bucks and it's definitely worth the money. This one I think is gimmicky. And like, you know, you put it in your homeschool hoping, hey, that they're gonna go over and it's gonna be like a Montessori thing and they're gonna weigh things and pour things. And you know, I honestly thought that this would pair well with these, that you could be like, these, if you don't know what they are, they're a base 10 starter set. Also a huge waste of money as far as I'm concerned. If you wanna teach your kids what a thousand looks like versus a thousand versus a hundred versus ones and tens, so you can teach them with this and use it for like five minutes, maybe 10 minutes. Like they'll play with it one time. And, and that's my experience with the last few kids is they play with it one time and then that's it. Then they're not interested. But what you can also do is just look up a video on YouTube. I'm sure you can find a really good video to teach them 100s, 10s and how it all goes together, right? So what I thought is, okay, well we get these tens and we put a 10 in one side to weigh it. And then we take 10 ones and we see if it weighs the same. It doesn't work that way because these aren't solid and these are, do you know what I'm saying? Like they're not the same weights. 10 of this, 10 of these does not equal one of these. So in that sense, these two toys are in my mind a waste. Um, a waste anyway. And like I wanted this to be so exciting. Like we measure stuff and we weigh stuff and oh, look at that. Is it the same? Is it different? I mean, honestly, and I have a neurodiverse child and I have, um, I want to call him normal, but he's not, but that's okay. You know, all kids are different and some kids are just really interesting and he is really interesting. <laughs> and I have a third son, I have a stepson as well, um, but he's not homeschool. So as far as I'm concerned, those two waste of, don't get them. That would be, I get it in your head. You're thinking it's going to look so cool on your shelf and they can go and pick it out and play with it and explore it and learn from it. No, it's kind of a waste in my mind. Um, these are awesome because not only can they play with these before they were too young um, to use them, they played with them, but they're not that easy. Like for three-year-olds to put these together and make different spaceships or whatever, it's it's not designed for that. The magnets, I'll show you which magnets are the best for that, which you know, you. I mean, I'm sure you have magniformers and you have magnetiles. I would say magniformers are way easier for kids to use. Here's magniformers and here is magnetiles. Magnetiles are way easier for kids to put together when they're three. They can do those when they're three. Um, it's just, they're a little more frustrating because they, they're more delicate, those. And then as a bonus, it's not a math manipulative. I guess it's a science manipulative. Um, but this is super cool. If you have any of these snap circuit sets and you don't have to have any experience because look at this, you open the book and you know, I put off doing this for so long because I was like, you know, I don't have, I don't know how to tell them about, you know, about electricity. I don't know that much about electricity, what you're learning here. So let's go to an easy project. Um, I mean, they're all easy. But let's go say project seven or project nine. All you're doing, what you're teaching them is to follow steps. And then if this is backwards, it's not gonna work. So then you're teaching them like problem solving, you know, process of elimination. Okay, we tried this, will it work now? Okay, are the batteries, you know, are the batteries working? Like, are they full and things like that. So don't be intimidated if you're thinking about snap circuits and you're like, I can't do it. Yeah, you, you don't have to. It's gonna teach you too, um, which is what I love about homeschool. Now let me put you back down. There. Um, but math manipulatives, these are great. And we haven't opened them this year. This, is, this will be our second set. And this is great. Um, so those are in my mind a winner. Now let's talk about curriculum. So I'm probably gonna put this in a separate video. So curriculum, so there's spiral math and there is mastery math. Mastery math is you do one step at a time. 
and it's what they use in Singapore. So Singapore math and math mammoth are mastery math. So once you master this type of math, you go on. Whereas spiral math, you do a bit and then you go back and learn and refresh what you just learned. And then you do a bit more and you go back and learn what you just learned. Um, so it's a little more, I want to say dynamic. And so I think for, so for my son that does not have, that is not neurodiverse, the spiral math, which is um, the good and the beautiful and Saxon math work fine. They work fine. I don't like them. The reason I don't like them is because it's too dynamic for me. I like something a little more simpler. Now, it is beautiful and it is, it's relatively simple. It's not that complicated. Um, so I'll give you, uh, hopefully at the screen right now, you're looking through it and you can take a look. Or here, let me just show you with my camera right now. Okay, so it starts off, this is the kindergarten one. It starts off this, so your supplies, and then you go to page one. Now we are just starting this book with my kindergartner. So I just wanted to try it out and that's why I got it. Um, so as you can see, it's like how many, how many spades? How many of this? How many of that? So it's simple, but then it goes back and it's like, you got cutouts to do. Oops, my knife there. <laughs> You got cutouts to use and like how many of these in a 10 frame? So you're introducing them to 10 frames. So it's not sticking to one topic. Okay. So it does counting, but then it does counting in 10 frames. So it's, it, it is beautiful, but it, it switches topics a lot here. Let me show you a few more pages just so you can take a look and see, although you've probably seen it cause you can, I mean, I'm sure you downloaded the sample online. So there's some 10 frames, there's some matching, there's some all different stuff. Now, for my child that is neurodiverse, this starts in grade one. Well, it's level one, right? So it's grade one, it's level one. So you go at your own thing. And I like it because now this is the pre-workout stuff. So you need to know, hey, equal amounts, same or different. So this is just kind of like a review, right? Can you count? Your child needs to be able to count. Can you put in these missing numbers? Um, so once your child can do that, and in my experience, they can learn to do that through um, the Star Wars books through, I have a book that I made. I didn't want to show you my messy thing, but I have a book that I made and I made it for my youngest child. And the reason I made it is because his older brothers play Minecraft and I wanted him to start just figuring out some stuff and he wasn't into it. He wasn't into any of the books I was offering. Like here, here's Star Wars, look at this. But Minecraft he gets and knows, so. This is a Minecraft book, but it's pretty, it's simple. And I like it for older kids too. Like if you have a neurodiverse kid um, who wants to start math, but he's starting later, he's starting older. He's seven maybe and needs help. So find the number two and trace it. Okay, so it's starting very basic and you go through three and four. And then down here, it's like fill in two squares, color two blocks, circle the number two. So it's relatively simple. Okay, do you know what I'm saying? And then we move on from there. Now you can get this on, I have Etsy. If you want for five bucks, um, you can print it off yourself. It's got a whole bunch of mazes, Minecraft mazes, and then it gets into, it's also to create self-esteem as well, because then you go into like the audition, the addition is 10 frame. So it's simpler, do you know what I'm saying? So it'll create self-esteem use, like counting, you're counting. How many Steves are there? How many swords are there? Stuff like that, okay? And then here is like number identification, counting again, like color all the number 10. So it's number identification. So if you have an older child and you don't want a baby looking book, this is a good pre-book in my mind. You can also get it, um, should be on Amazon. It's difficult to get Minecrafters book, even if you follow all the rules for it, it's difficult to get them on Amazon, um, but you can find it on, which shop is it? The shop that is, what shop is it? It's Lulu. On Lulu, I have it. Lulu, it's not as cheap, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it's like, it's only six bucks um, to produce it, but um, but then for shipping and everything, it's like, I think it'll come out to $12 for you. But again, if you got a printer, you can print off what you like, and it's only five bucks, you can get the whole book. There's 73 pages. Here's some more, greater than or less than. So it's simple, and to me, it's a good pre-book. Um, it doesn't cover shape identification, but um, that is... That's okay. So let's get back to, uh-oh, I hear an interruption. Let's get back to, okay. So look at how this starts out. 
So pretty simple, right? Like one and three, two and two, and it goes through page after page until you get it. Draw as many dots as the number shows, then divide them into two groups. So it's pretty, so I just like it because it's simple. Two plus one equals that. And if your child can't handwrite, have them do dots as the answer. Or like I had him tell me, but um, for a while there too, we did dots. So take a marker, one, two, one, and one, two, three, right? So you can also do, now Mastery Math is used by the country to uh, the, the top ranking countries in the world for math, Singapore. That's why it's called Singapore Math. Now, the thing is, is that you can do a combination of Saxon math, not Saxon math, a combination of um, mastery math and, and spiral math by just keep, because you don't have to do every one of these. So then you can go back later and do some more. You know what I'm saying? You can go back and just open up a page for your child and be like, okay, fill in these ones or erase some of them if they did in pencil and be like, okay, let's do a review and do these again. So that's why I like it is because until you understand this plus this, you don't move on to the next one. So I just like that. Oh my goodness. Um, I guess there's screen right for using it on the stove. Um, so I just like it better. I think it's, I think it's easier. It's simpler. The only thing that you need is an abacus really that helps, uh, my son, uh, work on it. And then we do like one page a day, do one page a day. Um, but, and then there's the answer key. So that's, that's really all you need. So price-wise, they're both relatively well-priced. Um, so it's whatever you like. Yes, this is more beautiful. It is. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm not saying it's not effective. I'm just saying for me, I don't really care for it. I want to stay on a subject until I fully understand it. And then um, that's what I like. Um, so, but my son who, now um, my neurodiverse son does really well with these, with Math Mammoth. And my other son does really well with this, but I'm going to switch them. I, we're only using it, this one, just because we have it. Um, but really, I want him um, to switch on to, so we only do it sometimes because I'm going to wait till he's old enough and then we'll switch on to Math Mammoth and hopefully uh, that will work well for him. Now, this is the expensive part, if you will, expensive part of the good and the beautiful is a little box that comes with what comes in it. It comes with little cars, some sticks, some counting sticks, stuff like that. So very cute, again, very beautiful. Very beautiful, very cute. And uh, yeah, and stuff like that. So that's my review for those. Now, if you wanna see which books I think are the biggest waste, tune into my next video, because that's what I'm gonna be talking about is homeschool books and which ones are awesome and great and uh, which ones are not.